The California Golden Bears 2011 Pac-10 season has been nothing short of a long ride on an emotional roller coaster. Gut-wrenching, crushing defeats have been sandwiched between uplifting, rejuvenating victories. And along the way, heroes have emerged. Junior guard Jorge Gutierrez has become the heart and soul of the Bears. And on some nights, it has been his pure will that has made this team winners. Alan Crabb has been a freshman sensation, a pure shooter who feels no pressure as raining clutch shots has become his signature. Today in Berkeley, Cal looks to win conference play with a fourth straight win, but they'll have to beat Stanford. The Cardinal crushed the blue and gold on opening weekend at Maple's Pavilion. California hosts Stanford next on Comcast Sportsnet California. First Saturday in March, it is time to begin the madness. And look who is inside Haas Pavilion, the Stanford Band. They've not won here in three years trying to spoil Senior Day for Mercury. Sanders fries and the Bears have won three in a row. The Cardinal have won two in a row. Should be a good one. Stanford against California. Welcome to Comcast Sportsnet California's presentation of Stanford versus Hale. Greg Pop alongside a guy who has seen a couple a of senior of days. The great dad, Bell Wyman, it is senior day. Only one senior will play today. So we'll start with a pair of juniors, starting with Jorge Gutierrez. Dan, his first two years here in Berkeley, he averaged five points a game. Now he is their leading scorer. Last time he was on this floor on February the 20th against UCLA, he went for 34 points. Well, unbelievable. What a year. Jorge Gutierrez is at. Sensational in all aspects of the game. And he is a player that makes everybody else better. He's driving to the rim, he's making threes, and by the way, he steals the ball. So Gutierrez is really the heart and the soul of the California team, and he has been just spectacular all season. He does everything, but the thing he does the best is guard. Mike Montgomery does not play a lot of man to man, he plays mostly zone. I'm hoping he plays man to man today because I want to see him check Jeremy Green, Stanford's leading star. Not easy to check Jeremy Green. Jeremy Green, we know, is a prolific three point shooter. Now, Jeremy brings more to the table than that, but he is an excellent outside guy. He can also put it on the floor. He attacks the rack, but a perimeter shooter. So, Greg, you're right. when these two schools met back on January the 2nd and Stanford won 82 to 68. But now, up and down here, but they have played a lot better of uh, late. So crack up the enthusiasm for this, the first uh, Saturday of March. We'll tip it when we come back. Stanford against California. Started back in 1913-1914 season. Today, a gift to the Berkeley campus. The Stanford Cardinal are here. They not won here since 2008. Let's check out the starting lineup for Johnny Dawkins and Mike Montgomery for Dawkins and the Cardinal. Anthony Brown, Josh Jones on the front line. Dwight Powell, he had a huge game against Dale back on January the 2nd. Jared Mann and Jeremy Green in the backcourt for Mike Montgomery, who coached at Stanford for 18 years at his Harper camp. Our Curry Sanders fries it on the front line. Alan Crabb will play small forward and the backcourt. Brandon Smith is playing so well. The sophomore point from Dale Sale and a do-it-all guy, Jorge Gutierrez. Kale's top defender, top scorer, and top assister. Will he do it in the NCAA tourney dance? 16 and 13 overall. They are 9 and 8 in conference play. Is that resume good enough to get them in the field of 68? Well, I, I think California is going to have to make a run. I, I think right now, no. But if California wins today, and I think they have to win two games in, in the uh, Pacific Life Pac-10 tournament to get them the 19th. Then they're in the conversation because they played a tough schedule. Mike Montgomery's making that same point to you and I about a half hour ago. If we win today, win two in the tournament and get to 19 overall, they will be on the on the bubble to try to make the tournament. You look at their non-conference schedule. They played number two Kansas here at Haas Pavilion. They played number eight Notre Dame, number nine San Diego State. Of course, in conference Arizona, UCLA. But they have lost to Johnny Dog. That's the one loss that's going to hurt them.
time when it went back on January the 2nd when uh, Dawkins and the Cardinal beat him by 14 points. Beat, beat him early in the year in the first game, and uh, Stanford playing well and did a great job at Naples to get that one. And I think Johnny's done a terrific job at Stanford. This is a very young Stanford team. I think the best young players in the Pacific 10 Conference are at Stanford, and if they mature and get better, Stanford's going to be in real good shape in another year or two. They don't have a senior on the roster. What's happened in college basketball? We have senior day today. There's one senior playing. Mark Curry, Sanders, Fries, and his mom, dad, his sister, and cousin are here to watch him for a final time in the regular season. In theory, they could also host an NIT game here, but they want to go to the tournament. We're underway. Stanford goes first. I like this road look on the Cardinal going with the black jerseys and the black shorts. Little red piping, Cardinal piping. Here's Jeremy Green. And you're getting your wish. They're going man. They're going man to man. But he's not putting Gutierrez on him. He's got no. Alan Crabb on him. And he's got Alan Crabb on Green. And I thought California would come out and zone shot clock now. There's Jarrett Mann. Ooh, good, good job. And they steal it. Green and Smith takes it. Up the floor to Gutierrez. Now Kale will get into their half-court set right inside the camp. It is senior day. And the senior knocks down one to begin. Well, you got to be a little anxious on senior day. Well, you do, you do, and if you're not revved up for this one, I mean, big rivalry game, California-Stanford. It's Mark Curry Fryson's last home game, so great start for so, Mark Curry to make that shot. So Mike Montgomery certainly uh, implied to me early he was going to start in a zone, but he's going man-to-man -to, -man to open a game. Of course, they are very multiple. Shot clock again down. Brown, the freshman over Crabb. That's a good matchup, and the rebound swept out by Gutierrez. He could not secure the rebound. Anthony Brown against Ellen Crabb will see periodically, Dan. That's a great matchup of a couple of, of freshmen who are going to star in this league as long as they'd like to. Yeah, that's right. For as long as they'd like to be in the league, they're going to be big players. And why does California zone so much, Greg? Well, really, California only plays five, six, seven players, seven at the most. Don't want to get in any foul trouble if you're the Bears. So you play that zone, you relax a little bit, you try to stay out of foul trouble, and Smith takes it all the way in, but uh, no foul, California will get it out of bounds. When they do play man on man, and Johnny Dawkins mostly plays man, there, there's so many good, just pure matchups. I like the point guard matchup today. Johnny Dawkins and man, a great defender against Brandon Smith. Here's Sanders fries in. That one may have been ultra by Owens. And Jorge Gutierrez sticking his nose in there like he always does. Well, we talked about Jorge at, at the top of the show. And, and what a winner. And he's the heart and soul of this California team. You forget, Greg, he's a terrific rebounder from the guard position. I mean, he does about everything for California. And you mentioned off camera, Greg, that you thought he really had to work on his shooting from last year to this year. And I agree. And he has. And now... You know, he's a very good outside shooter. I wouldn't call him a pure shooter, no. but he wills the ball in the basket, especially in clutch situations. Second half against Oregon, did not have a great first half. He came on strong, made big shots, propelled California to that win. He just would not accept a loss. There's the step back and offensive foul called on Jeremy Green. Just a little push off with the free arm to clear space. Let's take a look, Coach. What do you think? They push off here? And yeah, there's Gutierrez who picks him up now. I think that Gutierrez well, slip in the lane helps. Yeah, a little, you know what, Greg? I, there wasn't a whole lot of contact there. I, I didn't think. There's Gutierrez throwing it away. Alan Cramp tried to save it against the sideline. He could not. Gutierrez that time got up and uh, lost himself and threw it back out. Nice effort by Alan Cramp trying to save along the sideline, though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I actually... He was in the air. Yeah, he was in the air, but actually a fortuitous call for California because had he saved it, Jeremy Green would have had a layup the other way. Michael Reed, Ruben Ramos, and Darren White are officials. They may have ruled that he stepped out initially, and then, of course, you have to reestablish position. It's not enough to just be airborne if he did step out at some point during that play, but a nice effort for Craig. There's Crab, watched by Jeremy Green in the post to Camp. Camp against Powell. Camp with that left hand jump from so clever run goal. Great job execution was by California. You want Camp 
to be the trigger guy. You want him to handle as much as you can because he makes things happen. Very good at the low block and score can pass and a decision maker. He's checking Powell. That's a matchup. You and uh, Barry Tompkins did the opener on January the 2nd, Dan. As you remember, Dwight Powell Ooh. ate up Harper Gant. He had 21 points it in that may game. Have been, may have been one of Dwight's better games of the year. And he's very talented. Dwight Paul, who, Dwight Powell, who's underneath the basket, about 6'9". Very good all-around player. Josh Owens, who had 31 of the win against Oregon last Saturday with the miss. Green with the three. And the rebound to Allen Crabb. Jorge Gutierrez is already up the floor. Stanford gets back defensively. Can't not seal along the baseline. Seal was the key. Sealed the defender, caught it, and laid it in out the other side. Oh, what a pass. It, to make that pass and not bounce the ball out of bounds is very difficult. Jorge Gutierrez, again, beautiful pass and a good seal. I don't think Johnny Dawkins is happy. He's going to bring in four new players. Okay, what, what's Gutierrez right here? Yeah, he's going to make that pass on the outside hand. Outside hand. Beautifully done. And Stanford, multiple substitution. Great job by California to get it inside. And Johnny Dawkins not liking what he's seeing. Make he's it making five. The Make it five. He, he brought five. five new players in the game. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. Three and a half in, he pulls all of the starters out and brings in all of his bench guys. Here's Aaron Bright, the good-looking freshman. Jack Trotter, the lefty. That's something Mike Montgomery does not have the luxury no. to do. He doesn't have five no, off he, the bench. He does not have five <laughs> to put in. But he was getting with us earlier. He said, hope you enjoyed the magnificent five today. <laughs> That's all I got. Baseline shot. Missed there by Josh Justus. Alan Crabb. Got to go out and get him. He can stroke it. Rebound off the deck. Well, Cal's just out hustling them right now. When you get a rebound off the floor like that, Stanford not alert to open the game. Well, I think, obviously, the Cardinals need to back off a little bit and have a solid possession here. All new five in the game. You're only down six, so you got to stay poised. Continue to run your offense and make sure you get a shot and don't turn it over, and that's exactly what California is playing tremendous man-to-man -man defense. All right, now Stanford does not have a go-to guy to go on offense. Aaron Bright will pick up the foul. Jorge Gutierrez, the Tasmanian oh, devil. Okay, <laughs> I like Jorge. <laughs> hip, hip, Jorge already. Chris Wondlowski from De La Salle High School came out of nowhere to have a huge year last year. Kind of like Brandon Smith, this sophomore point guard. We were blowing about how much better Jorge Gutierrez has become. Who would have thought Brandon Smith would be playing this way? Yeah, Brandon Smith was playing great. I mean, I mean, he has assumed that point guard position just like he owned it and just making great passes and scoring and doing a beautiful job. Harper can Nice ball fade there. They get Paul Airborne and then go and score. Brandon Smith, great, got his opportunity. It's a prime example of a player on the bench. All of a sudden, Gary Franklin transferred, and Brandon Smith gets in at the point guard. Can't get him out of the lineup. Johnny Dawkins has brought his starting five back in the game. They were all benched simultaneously. You know, he aired him out of the timeout. And Josh Powell draws a foul as we go back. Check out the ball fake here by Harper Camp. Yeah, great. Good, nice job by, by Camp. But he's just a good decision maker. Doesn't foul. He's, he's able to take it inside and make plays like that. Not a, not a terrific outside shooter, but someone that can do a lot of damage around the basket. Josh Owens missing the free throw. You know Harper is very motivated. Harper is Cal's best inside defender, and he, he did not play well against White Powell when they met in the uh, Pac-10 opener game, so you know he, he's motivated to come out and I'll play him today. Josh Powell missing both free throws. Stanford out to a tight start, and this is not a team that uh, scores rapidly. Gutierrez up over Jarrett May as three popped out. Nice rebound battle pulled on by the freshman Powell. Yeah, great job by Dwight Powell. Well, you love to see him just get a little more physical, get in that weight room, get more active, and he's got a world to tell. He's a player, though, to start a couple of freshmen. He and Anthony Brown on the front line. Powell out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. There he is for a guy his size. Just oh, like that. He, he, he's, a, uh, he's a very talented player. Just got to ask him to come into his own, get a little bit of confidence. More strength. Good job by Paul to come out that time. Good defensive to flip the ball. Stanford very aggressive on Gutierrez into Sanders prize and the left hand jump hook. It's his own miss and they'll reset. 
That's a bad entry pass there by Gutierrez. Sanders Friesen was engaged with Collin. And that's a turnover by the Bears. These two schools have some of the best freshmen in all of the conference of the nation. Alan Pratt will probably be the Pac-10 freshman of the year, but you've got the two starters. And Stanford at times, Coach, they'll play the five freshmen on the floor simultaneously. And they have done it quite a bit. Josh Smith at UCLA, very talented freshman also. But Pratt will be, in my opinion, the freshman of the year in the Pac-10 conference. Derek Williams, Williams from Arizona will be the player of the year in the conference. Congratulations, by the way, to Arizona. They won the uh, regular season back to championship play with a win. First time in six years they were able to win it. Williams was in foul trouble. Only had three fouls, did not play much in the first half. But they, they not lost a home game all year in McHale Center. And now they got to go to Staples Center. Charging call there on Owens. First foul of the game, Harper Camp coming out and they're getting it done on both ends. Well, California just playing well at both, like you say, both ends of the floor. Camp again, right in the middle of it. If he's not doing offensively, just gets in the way and establishes the, the position. And Owens with a couple of fouls going to go to the bench. John Gage will come in. Aaron Bright is back in as Stanford picks up California on the inbounds now, trying to get going back to a of throw away. Nice steal by Powell. Look at the big man take it across midcourt himself. What a tremendous young athlete. I mentioned he's from Toronto, but he went to the IMG Academy in Brayton, in Bradenton, Florida. They taught him well. John Gage can shoot it. That's a foul on the floor there. Called on Josh Kustis of Stanford. His first. Don't mind that foul at all. You're right. Gage is a good outside play, but Houston <laughs> obviously pushed. <laughs> Seeing the replay. Yeah, that was, that was it. Actually, a very easy ball by the Got to stop the ball. Cannot. Anthony Brown, the freshman missing after the freshman combination. Alan Crabb to Solomon. Here's Jorge. Back tap right to Gage. Kale swept the Oregon schools last weekend on the road, Dan, but they started sluggishly in the first half. They did not play a game all week, so they are refreshed, and you know they are, are amped to come out early in light of the way they played in the first halves last weekend. Stanford did schedule a game at this week. They played Seattle on Tuesday at Maples and won. Shot clock at five. They're not going to get a shot off. Right, two, one. Jorge ripped it. They're going to call a shot clock violation. I thought Jorge had the steal before. That's what Jorge thought. Well, Jorge thought he had the steal, and then all of a sudden. How do you like that, Coach? Yeah, you have to Solomon. Uh, great. That's not the guy with the ball. It's not senior day. It's freshman day. Well, Coach mentioned it earlier. Congratulations to Sean Miller and the Arizona Wildcats. They win the uh, Pac-10. They didn't go to the tournament last year for the first time after a run of 25 straight years, so they win the conference. Kale coming into play today in a three-way tie for fourth. They're looking at possibly playing USC next Thursday at noon at Staples. Stanford would like to finish number seven. They're going to have to play in that play-in game. Here's the final Saturday of the regular season. Kyle Fogg, a good game. As we mentioned, Arizona over Oregon, Dan. And Reeves Nelson, uh, you, you look at what he's done. And actually, Washington State without Clay Thompson, who was suspended for alleged marijuana possession. Uh, Clay's not playing. Lee's score in the back 10 Get Washington State ahead of UCLA in that second half. And Aaron Bright he's looked like he back. hurt his wrist, his yeah. left wrist on that exchange right before the timeout. So let, let's hope Aaron Bright's all right. He can come back. Backup point guard, the freshman from Bellevue, Washington, is when the uh, shot clock was winding down. Watch him go and get the ball here and tangle with Jorge Gutierrez. Watch his wrist when he clamped down on the wrist, huh? Jorge's strong. Garrett Mann will pick up Brandon Smith. Here's Harper's camp to Crab. Back to camp. Harper camp is off to a great start today. Most teams are going to back off of Harper camp because he's so good putting the ball on the floor. And if Harper can make that shot, he should have a big afternoon. Shot clock reset. Where does Stanford go for a bucket? Jeremy Green, always, you think, would be the guy. Always Jeremy Green. But Owens has been playing so well of late, had a big game, and so is Anthony Brown. That those are your three players. But again, well defended. California gets a piece of the ball. He's just made a nice drive, but couldn't finish. Harper Camp. 
Yeah, Edford forces some turnovers there. Cal a bit sloppy to open the game. Camp has scored eight points right away. Stanford committed 16 turnovers when Johnny Dawkins and Dick Davey over on the sideline, the longtime Santa Clara Broncos head coach, won that game by 14 back at Maples in early January. This is the matchup. Jorge Gutierrez against Jeremy Green. They may both be in the NBA. Gage missed camp for rebound game. Cal's going to run today. Well, they've had many opportunities to run because Stanford certainly hasn't shot the ball very well. And the bad news for Stanford is they've only scored four points in the first ten minutes. Now, Johnny Dawkins is looking at the scoreboard saying, I know we could do a little bit better than that. The good news is they're only down ten. You would think if you only scored four points in the first ten minutes of a college basketball game, you might be down 15 to 20. So his team has to hang in there, continue to play defense, hope to get a deflection and an easy score. And see if they can get Jeremy Green and Brown and get some of their primetime guys back and flow. Harper Camp sits down, Dan. Gutierrez has not gotten off to a great offensive start, but he's seeing the floor and he sees Richard Solomon inside for a dunk. Remember this. Richard Solomon has been the X Factor for California. The last three games, he's like seven for eleven from the floor, now eight for twelve. And he's really played well. Great, great on the Oregon swing. Did a beautiful job against UCLA. He's getting better and better. And given the Bears rebounding, shot blocking, and scoring, he has been a real asset to California. Sanders rising out of that scrum. Three on two. Allen Crabb all the way in, and he's fouled. What a play by the freshman. Well, you're, you're looking at one of the really talented freshmen in the country in Allen Crowd, and you're right about California looking to move the ball quickly. They're out hustling Stanford on the loose ball, Crab on the pump, and look at what the left hand. That was not with the right hand, he's a right. He just goes with the left and it's to the line and completes the three-point play. Third leading score on the club behind Gutierrez in camp at 12 and a half points a game, but he took off when the uh, conference schedule started averaging about 16 a game since conference play. He was a bit sheepish when Stanford saw him back on January the 2nd. He blossomed as an aggressive, uh, lethal scorer. Boy, Cat is really playing well. Brandon Smith in the little floor burn. Now they, they played man the entire game, California. And I think if, if you're Stanford and you're preparing for California, and they've zoned most of the Pac-10 season. You don't think they're gonna zone, you don't think they can play a man to man. Yet the Bears switched it up. They came out aggressive at home. They have not gotten into foul trouble and they've been disrupted with a capital D at the defensive end. Jeremy Green. Next on the free throw, averaging right about what he averaged last year as a sophomore, 16-6 last year, 16-4 this year. Last nine, though, he has really come on, averaging almost uh, 21 and a half points a game. He started slowly and said, I was in a panic mode trying to replace Landry Fields, who was going out of the NBA and playing so well for the New York Knicks that he was forcing some shots, but now he's playing like he played last year. Landry Fields is the leading guard rebounder in the NBA. He pulls about seven who a game. Would, who would have thought that last year while playing at Stanford? Hey, by the way, this guy, Landry Fields, he's going to go to the Knicks to be the leading, leading guard rebounder in the league. Among all guards. Among all guards. And he, he leads a few centers. <laughs> he like might. be the Warriors he center might. and a he few might. forwards. He pulls seven rebounds a game. Jorge Gutierrez. Solomon with a layup, a dunk, and another dunk. They are finding the big man. Well, when you break the defense down like Gutierrez, good things will happen. You get into the lane and you keep your vision and Solomon is active and he is a big time finisher inside. Jeremy Green's gonna have to take it himself here to get Stanford back in the game. And Stanford's gonna have to extend a little bit. Now they're gonna go man to man. Let's put a little pressure on. Let's go get him. But no he's stopping crap. Charging. Curiously is the call on Alan Crab. Thought he had the angle there, but he's called for the foul. Foul will come back in for Johnny Dawkins, Andrew Zimmerman, who played with Dick Davey at Santa Clara, will sit down. Harper Camp was back in, and now he'll sit down again. But all Cal right from the jump. And now they're up 13. Smith. 
the steal. Knock it out. Three black shirts. He's not going to stop. No, he's not. Don't yeah. listen to me. <laughs> Take it all the way to the rim. Oh, oh. Even though it's one on two. That's how confident he is. Please, forget that. I'm in motion, coach. I can take it in. Oh, how do you like California? California? It's all starting on the defensive end, though. Yeah. Yeah. Playing in this man is really attacking Sanders. Sanders fries and keeps Owens down. Pow, strip by Gutierrez. Crab looking around. Smith will pop a three. They would shoot a little better from the outside. They'd be up like 30. Jeremy Green's taking it all the way in. Got foul. We'll be on the free throw line when we come back. You like Solomon's game. I really well, a late I percent of shots here. Coach. Well, you bet. <laughs> dunk, dunk. Jorge Gutierrez is not scoring, but dishing. 7.07 go in the first half of California with a 23 to 8 lead. And here's why. Watch Brandon Smith defensively as the disruptive California. Now, here, here's your double. Here's Smith in the passing lane, and he does a great job to come in there and steal the ball. So they went trapped. They moved Brandon Smith into the passing lane, and he found a way to steal the ball. But that's what's been happening with California. It's really not been great so much of their offense, although they have executed. But defensively, they have stolen the ball and then gotten scores at the other end. Brandon Smith averaging uh, six points a game on the year, but he's really come on lately. They don't win the Oregon game uh, last week. You were up there at the uh, new Matthew Knight Arena coach for that game without his three-point shooting. He has played exceedingly well. And Kale's defense, and it played strictly man-to-man to, -man to open the game. Stanford is just three for 15 to open the game. Going back to last weekend, Greg, in Oregon, when California came in to play the University of Oregon, Oregon was on a win streak. They've been playing really well and had a chance to put California away in, in the first half. But the Bears hung in there, made the last couple of shots, went down 11 at halftime. They came out and I think maybe played their best second half of the year. They, they were tremendous. They went up to Corvallis and got that win. So three in a row for the Bears and playing good basketball here today. But Stanford's not out of this game. Still a long way to go, and you would think the Cardinal are going to do a little bit better than 3 for 15. You think they're going to get it going soon. I'm wondering when Cal's going to slip back into their zone at defense, as they just do not have a deep bench. They, they do it because of the lack of bench and also the foul trouble. They thought Sanders Fryson may give him the foul trouble, which he is not. That's a bad shot by Powell. Sanders Fryson got knocked down. Foul call on Stanford's Josh Owens. Powell, lucky he hit the backboard. He missed the target there by a foot. Yeah, th this is a situation for Dwight Powell that he's got to learn. You've got to make good decisions. You're down. Let's, let's make a, a smart move with the ball. Not, you don't want to take that shot away from him. You can probably get a better shot with a couple of passes. Hard to believe this is Mercury Sanders Fries in last uh, regular season game here at Haas. It seemed like he just got here. Of course, he was a JC transfer out of Jefferson High School up in Portland. He played on some great teams. Went to Eastern Arizona Junior College and then to South Plains City College in Texas before arriving last year. And he's become a, a very dependable go-to guy and, here as a senior. And a real popular player amongst his teammates. They honored him, obviously, before the game. Five sisters, two brothers, mom and dad, everybody was here. And uh, he's really answering the bell. Uh, he's, he's had a big game this afternoon. And, and the big factor, he has not gotten any foul trouble in the first half. I think he does have one foul. So you asked the question, when does California maybe come back into the zone? I would, the answer to that, I would think Mike Montgomery would think about it if all of a sudden Fryson picks up a couple of fouls or some of his guys start start to get those in that two foul category. Then I think he might drop into the zone. Now, like right now he's zoning. Or maybe when this guy leaves the game, Jeremy Green, when he comes out, maybe you want to go into his zone. Otherwise, he may just bust it with his three-point shooting. Well, this is a great opportunity for Green to see if he can get loose. There's Green. Oh, they're in the zone now. They're going to the 2-3 zone on this possession now. Shot clock at 6. Harris along the baseline. Fourth it up. Rebound Gutierrez. Does everything. Scores, dishes, assists, but mainly defense. Been a great year for California. After losing all the players they did a year ago and winning the regular season Pac-10 championship, I don't think anybody thought that the Bears would be here at 9-8 and eight in the conference. Another tremendous pass. I hope that ball just keeps going. How did he miss that? 
And he got fouled back inside by Jack Trotter. I mean, he lost the player of the year last year. Greg is Jerome Randall. Jamal Boykin, Patrick Christopher. As you look at the pass aside, a little surprise he missed this one right here because that, that was an easy one. Theo Robertson. Jamal Amon, Boyk. Jamal Amandi Amoki. <laughs> Alex yeah. Zhang. Max Zhang. Uh, how about DJ Seeley? How about Nikola Knezovic, who I thought came off the best Serbia. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they lost a lot. And yet the Bears have hung in there. Even through a couple of injuries this year. And we were kidding with Monty before the game uh, that this may be, in fact, his best year Great ever coaching as a coach. Oh, yeah. He's a four time Pac 10 coach of the year, of course, at Stanford. A two time national coach of the year. But this team was so up and down. They lost their first two in conference play, and they won two, and they lost two, and they won four in a row, and they lost four in a row, and now they're trying to end the season with a four game win streak as they did last year. And, and they're going to be a tough team to handle next week at Staples. No, no question about it. I, I think the only, in my opinion, in the green, green. The, the only green. difficult green. matchup in the conference. For California is Washington. Yep. yep. But Washington, with the speed, quickness, athleticism, and the deep, has given California problems. A anybody else, I think the Bears match up with great, including Arizona. You bet. They've given all well, the Arizona game here a couple overtime, 107-105. Sanders Friesen with the jump off to make his mama proud. Roberta Friesen is here, and his dad Marvin Sanders are here. It's the last time he may play in this gym. He's got to be anxious to have a good game, but he's. He's playing uh, in rhythm and doing a nice job. Now, Mark Curry said my jump hook is like my grandmother's favorite recipe. <laughs> I it's that good? I thought it's that good. Grandma may and, not and, like and, that. You know, I, I kind of like that line because he, <laughs> it is a great jump hook when he gets the ball inside. That means when all else fails. That's right. You just know, go to mama's. Gra grandma's recipe uh, always works. Or he got poked in the eye there. Or he Gutierrez got poked in the eye, the right eye. on the free throw line, sizing up. And a chance to carve in his lead. Cal out to a 16-point lead, and uh, Stanford's not making their free throws. Alan Crabb will come back in. Solomon, he played high school ball at Price High School in L.A. Well, Sanders Fries in leaving after this year being a senior. I think Solomon may move into the starting lineup next year. Uh, he'll get a great opportunity. I'm sure that's the plan. Otherwise, Solomon, they keep them all. Right, Solomon, the only thing with, with Richard, and he's playing well, certainly of late, he's got to stay out of foul trouble. Richard, you've been updating me on this game I know. all day. Unbelievable. Dude, behind. I well, UCLA, you UCLA was down 32-19 at half. Overtime now. Clay Thompson not playing in that game. He was suspended after marijuana possession the other night. After their win against USC, suspended by head coach Ken Bone. The shot clock was not reset. But plenty of time, and Smith draws the foul. On Stanford. Mike Montgomery with four minutes to go in the half has opened up a 16 point lead over his former school. Over on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, we have Sportsnet Central coming your way at 6 30. Mindy Bach and the half. Big bad Hank. Henry Wolf will tell you about the A's beating the Giants at Phoenix Muni. Brett Anderson up pitching Madison Bumgarner. The A's won at 6 to nothing. We'll have a really full post game from uh, this one here at Hot Pavilion. All the college basketball. It is the final weekend of regular season play here on the first Saturday in March. And it looks like uh, Aaron Bright's regular season may be over. We thought it was a wrist injury, but he looks like uh, Madison. Bumgarner after throwing 120 pitches, right, coach. And, and, and Aaron looks like he's really in pain. I mean, it, I mean he's been hunched over. And it's really too bad because he's an integral part of the Stanford team. He's had a good year, the freshman from Seattle. And hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll be okay. But it, you've got that shoulder. I thought it was his wrist, yeah. right? but that doesn't look like it. Well, the pain may have shot down from the shoulder all the way to the wrist. You wonder if he dislocated that shoulder, if it's a collarbone injury. And he's tough. He's watching his team from behind the bench. He's not drawn back into the locker room. Oh, what a good-looking uh, freshman he is, Aaron Bright, who was a starting point guard, now playing uh, off the bench. A tremendous shooting point guard. We're going to take that lap off. Brandon Smith gives Kale a 17-point lead, which matches their biggest of the game. So Stanford's got to cut into this sum here at halftime when they beat them at 82-68 back at Naples. They shot it well, and they held out a 68 points coach. They're not doing either today. Here's Trotter. Well, Duncan. Nice speed and a high low pass from Paul into Trotter. Yeah, perfectly done. 
something Mike Montgomery did a lot when he you was bet, I, love, I love the high low because it's difficult to get any help if you if you execute right. Paul made it happen. I just picture Rob Lopez feeding it into Brooke Lopez. Well, yeah, those guys were, <laughs> those guys were good. Yeah, you know what? St Stanford had a couple of pretty good players. They're the sports here. Oh yeah, they 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 won a they won a few games with that group. Went to a Final Four with Mike on the sidelines in '98 and. 2001 team may have been even better. They were 31 and 3 that year. Trotter diving on the floor with Sanders Fries in. They're going to call a set play. Mike Montgomery will in the half court. Eric Mann's a good defender. Gets up on Smith into Sanders Fries in. in from Harper King. for a tremendous first half today. What, what more can he do? <laughs> Harper can't at both ends. He's been all over the place. Scoring, rebounding, doing a beautiful job of passing the ball and playing defense again. Well, you know, Powell is a pretty good looking shooter, but, and you know, I like the fact Johnny Dawkins is keeping him out there. It's the only way he's going to get better. I mean, get used to it because Dwight Powell's going to be there for many years to come. He's had a, he's had a tough uh, first half. But he just has to hang in there and keep playing. Now, by, uh, California. Dwight Powell, when they met in the conference opener on January the 2nd, at 21 points on 7 of 11 shooting. He is one for five today with just the one single basket. So, my college basketball has changed so dramatically. The only senior on either roster is Mark Uri Sanders Fries in Stanford for the first time. Does not have a single season, a single senior. And there's Mark Uri coming out with mom and dad to be fed by Mike Montgomery and his teammates. You know, Greg, you really forget how special it is to, to play that last home game. I mean, you think about it, I'll guarantee I, I thought about it when I played. You're How'd you do your last game? Do you remember? Yeah, I got six. <laughs> I got on three shots. Three on, 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 I don't know, probably uh, quite a few. <laughs> but, but the fact is, you, you definitely think about it, that this is the last, last time at home you're going to put this uniform on. I'm going to calm Mark Curry down. It may not be the last time. What if they don't go to the NCAA tournament? We hope they do. But it could be they don't, could they not hold well, on you don't know that. I mean, you're not, you're not you're sure. It could be the last time, but it may not be. He's playing well. I think he's over the nerves. Goodyear is into camp. Goodyear is trying to distribute today. He's not scored much, but he has found open teammates. Aaron Bright has gone back into the uh, Stanford locker room after taking that wrap off his shoulder. So hopefully he'll be able to come back. Our Stanford's going to be forced to play in the uh, play-in uh, games coming up at Staples on uh, Wednesday night, Dan. Up their home schedule with Maples, but 11 and 5, and they're going to have at least one more to go in the tournament. Harper Camp gets that free throw shot up nice and high. Now, I would say that line, take, take a look at that again. Now, Harper is 5 out of 5 from the field, so he's got about 11, 12 points in the first half. Good job by Mark Curry, Sam Spice, and get him. You don't want him to pick up the second foul in the first half. Bach Bach comes in for Montgomery. Harper Camp missing the second free throw. Great free throw shooter. Sixth best in the conference. 81% coming into the game today. It has been California from the start. Can Stanford get back in this game? They got 90 seconds to go in the half. Bach, Bach, Bach. With the lock block. Right back up, though, in the baseline Jeremy shot is real by Jeremy Green. Well, Bach Bach made a great play to keep it in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the field of play, but opportunistic Jeremy Green right in the corner. Jeremy Green has nine points. Camp the miss, rebound Zimmerman, and a foul. Harper Camp fouls Zimmerman. Let's go back to the block block by Bach Bach. Hey, pardon me. <laughs> but here's something that Bach Bach can do. Does a good job to deflect the ball, and then it went right to Jeremy Green. So, Bach Bach, who I think, you know, earlier in the year gave California a, a few good games. And a way he hasn't played quite as much as he did earlier. Uh, but, you know, he's a player that certainly is well-liked by everybody. He's got some skill. You know, Mike Montgomery, I'm sure he'll come off the bench next year, and hopefully he can improve during the offseason. Interesting guy. He was born in the Sudan, a uh, country when he was born that was just war-torn by a civil war in his nation. Raised in Kenya. And uh, went to Florida, 
Wound up at Valley Christian High School in Sun Valley, California. And he's getting better and better as a basketball player. Very popular in the locker room. And he's a, he's a pretty good face-up jump shooter. Not only is he a big guy at 6'9", coach, but he can he can stroke it. Yes, he can. And uh, we know he can block shots and rebound the ball. And that's what California's asking him to do. So he's got an opportunity here to finish out this half and see if he can get something productive inside. Shot clock at 12 for the Bears. Johnny Dawkins wanted a foul. And there's one, a charge on Harper Kane. Oh, Johnny Dawkins grabbed pushed off. And he had Camp. That's his second foul on two offensive trips back to back. Zimmerman doing a nice job. Zim Zimmerman is a smart player. And he knows if he gets position and gets in front, he will get the call. So Johnny Dawkins wants a timeout. He, he wants a little flurry here at the end of the first half. I mean, if they can get a three here and come out of this uh, even 10 down, I'm sure Johnny Dawkins is going to be happy. Outwardly, he's very calm, but you know he is seething. And look at that stern look to his young man. He pulled all of his five starters out three and a half minutes into the game. Henry Wolford will have a uh, Sportsnet Central update coming up at halftime. And then we'll have a few thoughts or two from uh, great Mike Montgomery. And we'll give you full highlights and stats. That's coming up at halftime. Mike Montgomery now in his third year here in Cal after an incredible 18-year run at Stanford. Pac-10 Coach of the Year four times. I think the point can be made as we're watching this game on Beat Newell Court that he may be the greatest college basketball coach we've ever had in the Bay Area, Mike Montgomery. I mean, Pete uh, Newell well, obviously I, was terrific. I, I, thought Pete Newell, Wolford, I thought Pete Newell was the greatest Price. basketball coach of all time. But he didn't coach a long, long time. Well, I know. But his total wins. But his, uh, after, after Pete Newell, since we're on Pete Newell court, you have to put Montgomery up in the you top. You do, too. Oh, there's no question. No, no question. He's a Hall of Fame coach. When is the last time a Mike Montgomery team did not win 20 games? You want the answer or do you yeah, want to give it to him? 1994. Yeah, 93-94 they went to. Uh, now that is incredible. <laughs> think, think about that. He coached the last 10 years at Cal. They won 20 and some years 30 and went to the NCAA tournament. And he's two for two here at Cal. What wow. a shot. Oh, oh my goodness. Jeremy Green. Jeremy. Whoa. Just the recipe the Cardinal needed. Now if they can play defense and not foul here. I thought a pretty good finish by Stanford. Yeah. I mean, they're not, com they're not completely out. It's 33-21. Could have been a lot worse for the Cardinals. Jeremy Green with 14 points in the first half. He came alive. I think I have to admit that. Mike Montgomery's a great coach. Not the greatest of all time. So. carried away. But we're going to hear from Monty coming up next time. He'll be cool around these parts. Henry Wolf for the sports next time for And then we'll give you Mike Montgomery as his pairs lead the Cardinals by a dozen. Always a lot going on at the Berkeley campus here today, both outside the Haas Pavilion and inside. Cal wrapping up their home schedule. A team that was predicted to finish seventh in the Pac-10. They may get tied for fourth. And earlier we sat down with head coach Mike Montgomery. He asked him to assess his team's play in the Pac-10 this season. Every season has winning streaks and losing streaks just because of the nature of who you play and where you play them. And I've always kind of gotten a kick out of everybody saying, well, they lost three in a row. Yeah, you're playing at the three best teams, you're probably going to lose those unless you're a dominant team, which we're not, and most everybody in the league isn't. Uh, our resiliency, our ability to hang in there has been incredible, considering all the things that we've gone through this year, starting right from the beginning when, uh, you know, we, kids, Max didn't come back, for example, you, had, you know, we expected him back, and so you had a bunch of things happen that you hadn't anticipated. Rossi got hurt, another guy that you had counted on doesn't play. Uh, Gary Franklin leaves in the middle of the season, you know, so now you're you're starting to be down one, two, three guys that you had counted on, and then when Crab got the concussion, you know, that was really tough because we were really down to, we're playing five guys a lot of minutes. Uh, Richard Solomon has come on now to kind of help us in that regard, but we're playing five guys a lot of minutes, and these guys have really hung in there. I thought at some point, boy, these guys are going to run out of gas, but they haven't. They've, they've hung in there. They've done a great job. The, for us to be nine and uh, nine and eight right now heading into today's game with a chance to go 10 eight a chance to get fourth all by ourselves uh pretty amazing to me it's going to be harder for us just based on the fact that we play so few players and you know you're talking about three games in a row that's going to be hard i mean you know you, you we've had to pretty much we've not had the luxury of playing less than our best and winning we've had to play really hard uh, and that's been kind of our trademark a little bit now a little bit lately here we haven't played both 
halves hard or well, but we played one half and been, been able to win. It's going to be hard, but, but on a game-by-game -game basis, you feel like you can win any one of those games, which is good. I mean, there's not a matchup that should say, oh, we can't, you know, we can't compete with them. Now, Washington would be the one that you'd, you'd question just because of how they handle this. Uh, but, you know, everybody else, we played for tough. And, and so you take the first game, whoever that might be, you feel like you can win it. And there you're into the next game, and you're certainly like, oh, we can't win. No, nah, you, there you are. So, you know, it would be hard, but we're not the only ones that would say that. I think the teams with the best depth that can go eight, nine, and still be pretty good have a better chance in a three game or if you take that for playing round uh, you know four games in a row that's you never do that any other time although we did do it uh, in Orlando but we had a day off in between three really good teams uh, and you know you start to realize how hard that is and it's something Stanford's looking at having to play the uh, play in game it looks like Cal's going to draw USC and maybe play Thursday at noon we will not know definitively until later tonight we'll come back and rejoin by coach Colon. California winds up with a 12-point halftime lead. They led 27 to 10 by as many as 17, but Stanford closed a half with a 6 nothing run to make it reachable here at halftime. Welcome back inside Hospital League. Greg Butler rejoined by Dan Belwamini. They came out flying and fed the ball into Harper Camp over and over and over again. No, and he delivered. I mean, Harper Camp had a, a magnificent, magnificent first half. He did a great job when he got the ball. If he didn't score, he found players. And he benefited from the great mess here by Gutierrez, but Tampa left-handed move on the ring there. And he can put it on the floor, too. You know, Greg, he's, he's very effective in all areas. And this is, when he makes that that 18-footer, now you got to guard him. Now it's his opportunity to break you down on the dribble. Jeremy Green single-handedly kept Stanford within reach. And especially his, his fabulous finish at the end of the first half. He made the only two threes by either team in, in the first period. So not to, you look at the stat, here's the big one, points in the paint. Wow. Take a look at it, two by Stanford, 18 by California. Because Camp had 11 points, he made five baskets. Mercury Sanders fries and also got fouled. He made four free throws and wound up with eight points. Outside of Jeremy Green, nobody has scored more than two points for Stanford and Kale's defense just suffocating. Harper Camp, 20 minutes away from getting California a four game went straight to close this year. They went into 10 and 8 in conference play and 17 13 overall. All right, they're excited here in uh, Berkeley as Cal looks like they're going to end the year playing well at the win today. It'll be a four game winning streak. For an update on the Prep 10 uh, games today, we go to Daneville. Are you watching the uh, UCLA game closer than <laughs> well, this one? Well, you know, game over now. Yeah, yeah, the game is over and, and UCLA down 32 19 at half came back to win in overtime. Against uh, against Washington State without Clay Thompson, so they're the number two seed, number two seed. in the conference. Arizona one day over against Oregon, they will be the uh, number one seed. And with Washington State losing today, it certainly appears as though Cal, if they win this game, Dan, is going to draw USC in the first round. We don't know who will be four, who will be five. It won't matter, really, what color uniforms. It would only be the, uh, the difference if you're a four or five. And that game would tip off at Staples Thursday at noon. We don't know until they're all done, but it looks like it's going to be Cal and USC. Yeah, huh? It would be a good bet. It would be USC against California in the four or five, and Washington State drops to six. So they would play the number three seed. And the number three seed will be the University of Washington. And, of course, UCLA, the two seed, Arizona, the one. So if Cal draws SC, the winner of that game would go up against Arizona, who Cal has played very well. They have. Of course, one of the probably one of the greatest Pac-10 games in the last 15 years was here this year. Triple overtime, 107-105, where Arizona finally found a way to win. But it was an unbelievable game. Three-hour game. Brandon Smith kick out to Harper Camp, but he commits the foul. He charged after he made the pass. Picked up by Powell in the lane. All right, the big men are smart in modern-day college basketball. Now, do we need a three-foot restraining line in there, Greg, where if you stand in that three-foot restraining line, the foul will be automatically um, not on the defender. So, I, you, you know, I, I kind of I would love to have a three-foot restraining, just like the pros have. Josh Owens, a bad first half with the miss. The first three or four minutes of a half are always critical, but more so today. If Stanford does not make a surge here the first three minutes of this half, I don't know if they're going to be able to come back. What intrigues me about the Cardinal 
And Josh Owens, he is coming off a tremendous game in Corvallis. It was big, 31 and 11. Yeah, 31. And in the first half of this game, and here's what's really surprising with Josh Owens, he didn't get a rebound. Now we know half. we know he's a terrific player, and he could he, he does so many good things for the Cardinal, and they need him. But for him not to get a rebound in the first half typifies the way Stanford played. That's why they're down 12. Cal a bit sloppy that turnover that pass by Sanders Fries, which was curious at best, is their eighth turnover of the game. And there you go, Josh Owens, who had a monster up in Eugene last week, and 31 points. The first Stanford card to score 30 since Landry Fields went for 35 against UCLA last year. And now it's down to 10 day. Now it's been a little sloppy in the half court. Well, and that's a great side for Stanford to get Owens at least a solid hoop early in the second half. So it's been a good run by the Cardinals. They closed the first half 6-0. They come out to get the first field goal. Now they're down 10. They're, you know, they're in the game. So California's got to get back to playing good defense, get back to running their motion, and see if they can feature Camp and Gutierrez again. Montgomery always calls a good play on the inbounds pass. Did call a set play on this set. Let's see where they go with it. Well, Stanford looked like they're zoning out of the out-of-bounds. Baseline Gutierrez. Well, that missed everything. That ball came out of his hand sideways. Green stepped on the sideline. Jorge Gutierrez has not made a shot today. He is 0 for 4 from the floor, and that last one missed the rim. Now we saw him get poked in the eye early in the game. He's so tough, it probably wouldn't matter, but you wonder if that has adversely affected his shooting. Well, he's not a great shooter, but he has scored. Shot clock at 10. Where are they going? They're not sure. Blocks at six. They got to go and a foul. They got bailed out there off the ball. Foul on Stanford. So here's the sequence for the Cardinals. They're making a run. They could not save ball on the side. And then Powell picks up really a foul here that, as you said, really bails California out because the shot clock was down inside of five. And Brandon Smith with the shot clock nearly at 35 shoots that. Sanders Friesen got stuck. Gutierrez. Into camp, they're all over him though. That's going to be an over and back, a turnover either way. Stanford has turned the momentum of the game. It's quite clear. Now they got to pounce to see if they can really get back into the game. Well, clearly now Stanford's got their window of opportunity, and this would be a great time to feature Jeremy Green. See if your go-to player, who's being guarded by by Gutierrez, if you can find he or Brown. Brown has got it. Now that is a good go. start by Stanford. That's his first pass in the game. Well, Brown's a scorer. Now you said, you know, sometimes guys are scorers and sometimes they're, they're guys that, that are not. But Brown is a pure shooter, shooter. and he can score the ball. Jared Mann poked that from behind. Stanford has completely taken the game over here. This is a 10 nothing run at the end of the first half in the first 248 of the second half. Now they zone. So, so the Cardinal looks like they're going right back to the zone. They, they may get off of Gutierrez and see if he could make one on the outside. He could get off of Crab. Sanders fries it into camp. Nice cut through there. Nice pass by the big man Sanders fries it. And it was Camp who rolled to the goal. Boy, he needed that basket. Foul. And he got fouled. No. Nope. Yep, they're going to count it. They'll go for a three-point play. I wasn't sure if the official was saying charge or basket is. A basket to Powell. Let's go back and look well, at the uh, pass from Bryson to Camp. Now, we're going to move it forward just a little bit further. And Josh, when the ball stops it here, it goes to Bryson. Look at the cut down the middle. No vision here on the outside. Beautiful high to low and a nice feed inside for the score. And my first thought was the correct call. I think they changed it ultimately, but Powell's basket was nullified. They called a charge on him. I think the officials had a split verdict there for a while. They went charge. Here's Craig. Got it. That's a big sequence. Basket by Camp, a charge on Powell, which was debatable, then Kraft comes right back, and they're up well. Jared Mann lost his footing, but he was grabbed and held by Brandon Smith. Did you think Powell charged, or was that a foul on the block? I, I thought he did charge, to be, to be quite frank with you. Uh, we're going to take another look at it. No, I thought he definitely charged. But again, we need that restraint circle in there. Right. If you're standing inside of it, that foul's on you. Because he was really close to the rim that time. Now, you know the rule. 
this year. If you're a, if you're a primary defender, that is somebody guarding the ball. Oh, no, no, they gonna count that? Yes. Green shot that from uh, quarter court. What shot that was by Jeremy Green? It was crazy long range of uh, Casey Jacobs in it, and a simultaneous foul. We'll go for a four point play here. Doesn't need much room, does he? I mean, Gutierrez had a hard time fighting over the top of that screen, and Green just, he just needs a little window to make that shot. They broke Casey Jacobson's single season Stanford record for three pointers a year ago by making 93. They missed some free throws here. They may be able to, to use later in the game. Comes from a basketball family. His, his dad, Gerald, played in New Zealand, played overseas. You know, Jeremy's been brought up with the game. He's from Austin, Texas, and what a find by the Cardinal. He's been just spectacular. He's kept him in the game today. Stanford down nine, four into the second half. The Stanley Cup playoffs. They are the hottest team in the Bay Area, the Sharks, and I think Cal would be the second hottest if they win this game today. They'll close the year with a four-game winning streak. Harper Camp trying to hold off Anthony Brown and Jeremy Green and the Stanford Cardinal. You know what the old saying is in college basketball? What's the old saying in college basketball? Here, it's not how you play in December, it's how you play in March. <laughs> California, you know, if they can win today, you know, on a good winning streak going into the Pacific Live Pac-10 tournament. In the front line is devouring them inside. Arthur Camp and Mercury Sanders rise, and they can't handle them inside. Well, they really have dominated Stanford on the interior. It's really been the story of this game. Jeremy Green's done all he can. California has just taken care of Stanford. Oh, you've got to be careful on that pass. It's Crab a three. Alan Crab. <laughs> Hard to hold him down for the whole game. Because he's one of those players now that his confidence is sky high. And Mike Montgomery has given him the green light. If he's available and he's open, it's going up. Derek Mann gets sucked inside by the two big guys. They knock him down. One of them fouled him. Sanders, Fryzen, or Camp. This is a power move by Derek Mann. Great job to take it strong to the rack and draw the foul and slow the game down a little bit, get to the foul line. That's his game. He's not a very good shooter, not a very good free throw shooter. He's 50% and a horrible three-point shooter, one for 16, but he is tough. And he'll get inside. Aaron Wright, by the way, the injury was on a huge back on the left shoulder. He has a left shoulder strain. His return not likely. Jeff Powers comes in off the bench for Mike Montgomery. Not Brandon Smith, maybe. Well, he's got, he may have been shaken up a little bit. A little high injury. He's gone right down to the ground. We yeah, saw him he, in the tunnel. He's in the tunnel. He's down on the ground. So Powers comes in for... Brandon Smith, Jorge will move to point guard. And Crab will play in the backcourt. Big lineup here for Montgomery. Yeah, Crab. Is that a Crab dribble there? Well, it, it, you know, it might have been his, yeah, it was a Crab dribble. You know, his dad played the Pepperdine. You know. And, and Allen, what a shooter. He is, he's, you know, he got a slow start this year, as you pointed out earlier. But has he come on strong? Pac-10, so Pac-10 freshman of the year. So and he's going to have a shot to be on the all Pac-10 team. I, I'm not sure if he's going to make it or not, but he's in the conversation. Cage trying to stop this 7 nothing Kale run. Owens got stripped cleanly by Crab. Alan Crab has taken off since the conference schedule began. And there's Brandon Smith going on the, uh, the bike, trying to stretch it out. I thought he may have had a, a thigh injury. He's trying to stay loose. And he wants to come back in here. Well, they cut it down, Dan, but now it's back out to 16 points. Stanford needs somebody else but Jeremy Green. And, they, and they, haven't, they haven't found that somebody else. I thought it might be Josh Owens. I thought it could be Anthony Brown. But California has defended beautifully. There's Gage inside. See, Gage. Gage is another intriguing player for Stanford. You know, was not really in the mix early in the year, but getting more and more time. And you'll love to see him now kind of get inside. You know he could shoot out of it. But he's got to work on his inside game and his defense. Can't. Little stutter move on Gage. Beautifully done. Wow. Beautifully done there by Harper Camp. The rock on John Gage. Got it, got it, get it. 
Now, don't forget, he's a left-hander, but does a great job to get over on, on the right side and take it all the way. See, Gage is playing him with the left. And Owen's a little bit late coming over. If you're a secondary defender, you're going to get that ball all the time. The primary guy, the guy that's guarding the ball, you can defend and hold position under the rim. But if you're not a primary defender, if you're someone coming for the help and you're right underneath the basket, does it mean, does it matter, Greg, if you're there perfectly or not, you, the foul will be on you. Okay, he got dinked a little bit there on the fake handoff by Camp, but he kept it. Ripper with 15 points right around his score. The average of 14 and a half. Coming into play. Now, Cal is reclaimed a 17 point lead. That's their largest of the game. They matched it. They led 27 to 10. Stanford with a 10 0 run. Got it down to single figures, but now a 10 2 Cal run right back. And they throw it away. Look between green. That's the five hole in hockey. <laughs> Stanford turns it over. <laughs> the five hole in hockey. 18 EMA used to get up a lot of goals to the final of the start, but not now. Right between the legs. Stanford only has 30 points, Dan. I thought the Cardinal would get it going. And the person who's really got it going is Arthur Camp. He started hot, and he has stayed hot. Cal now with their largest lead of the afternoon. They're up 19, Camp, with an 18-point game. Owens will rob away from Sanders Fries and rebound to Solomon. And they're in the open floor. They're much more lethal today. Rudy Harris, just not himself, lost it off his foot. There's a four on one. You don't need all four. Jeremy Green will pop a three. Now basketball's changed. You have a four on one and you shoot a three. Dunk! Four on one. It was a five on one. And then it scores. Now wait. It was a five on one. And you and shoot, a shoot a three. Wow. And no one really rotates back defensively the way it's gone this afternoon for the Cardinals. You would think if you're one of the trailers, you're going to say to yourself, he's shooting the three, I got to get back. Boy, how do you like the Bears, though? Crap that's again. A, that's a one on all day. It's a one on like all day. 20 to go in the second half. California 51 the 30 lead. Now, watch what happened the last time. Now, stop it here. Here you got one, two, three, four, and five. So, this is a five on one. It's a five on one. Now, so somebody, someone has to get back. You cannot have no one back defensively. Someone's got to rotate. They don't. I don't mind the shot. I got to be honest with you. I do not mind the shot, but someone has to rotate defensively so you don't get a breakaway at the other end of the floor. All right. But five on one, Dan, you're going to get I, a layup. No, I understand why, why that. take a three? Well, okay. Because you're down 40, right. 49 to 31. You need threes. I don't mind the shot. You got Green shooting it. Basketball's changed. It has changed. It has Absolutely. Changed. Johnny Dog has been played that way at Duke for Coach K. Two-time All-American and uh, Duke's first national player of the year. And you got numbers like that going for a layup or a dunk, but the game is played differently today. There's Derek Mann all the way in for later. Johnny Dawkins, to my recollection, led Duke in scoring all four years he was there. <laughs> so, and he was a good NBA oh, player. Oh, yeah, well, what, a, you know, what, a, what a player. He was their number one scorer in school history for a long time. Recently, it was broken by J.J. Riddick, but he was the first, really, of all their great stars. First national player of the year that Coach K had. And, and he's suffering growing pains with his Stanford team. He's playing quite a few players, and, and they're all young guys. And California's on a roll. They're playing beautifully at the, at the end of the year. But uh, Stanford, uh, Stanford will be back. I mean, they, they go to the Pac-10 tournament. They play in the first round, but they got a lot of a lot of good young guys. Oh, he's quite a little angry today. He is. Well, Stanford cut it down to nine, and now it's back out to 19. Alan Crabb has scored nine of his 12 in the second half. Coach, this freshman has come alive. Well, he's got game. There's no question about that. And what he's developed, really, I think, is his dribble drive to rim. Because you know he can shoot from the perimeter. Everybody jumps him, and he can put it on the floor. I mean, he plays really like a big guard. And I think that's his position in the next level. But Alan Crabb is very active. He's all over the floor. He's got that nice smile about him. Look what he's done, 12 Six per game leads all packed in freshman Greg. And look at last week what he did. I mean, 56%. I mean, three point shot. Most points by a Cal freshman since, by the way, Jarif Abdul Rahim when he was here. Don't forget, Jarif was only here one year and he was the Pac 10, not only a freshman of the year, he was a Pac 10 player of the year as a freshman. 
Crab went down. He slipped. Harper can't pass 20 points today. He has been solid all day. Mike Montgomery made a nice point at halftime. We were talking earlier about how Kale's been very streaky. They win four, they lose four, they win four. But part of that was when Alan Crabb had that mild concussion suffered in Washington. They lost that game. They missed the next two. They lost both of those. And that was a pivotal point of the year right after the Arizona triple overtime loss. They lost to Crabb for essentially a three-game stretch. But they have been up and down. They lost their first two games. One, two, lost two. So they were two or four after six. Then they won four in a row. They lost four in a row. And they're trying to end the year by winning their final four. Well, we know it's not a deep California team, Greg. When, when Alan Crabb is not in the lineup, I mean, that takes a lot away from the Bears. I mean, look, look what he brings to the table. He's a tough guy to defend. He does a great job driving, shooting the three. And when he went out against Washington, and the California has not yet great with Washington to begin with, but I thought that maybe a winnable game was when they went to the Pullman. Yep. And now you don't have him. He's not yep. playing in that game. And it was difficult for California there. But now, I don't want to take anything with Washington State. They won 19 games. They've had a great year. Beat Gonzaga by 20. So this is a good... I thought of Washington State, by the way, I thought had they won today, had they beaten UCLA, it would have been a 20th win. And I really believe they're in the NCAA tournament. I, I really do. I think that would have gotten them in. It's too bad Clay Thompson was suspended prior to the game uh, for alleged marijuana possession. So that just took a tremendous amount away from Washington State late. But they still lost in overtime to UCLA. Jorge Gutierrez with a hard foul on Jack Trotter. So Arizona is obviously going to make the tournament. Washington can make it as well. UCLA. I think is in as well. Then we've got a couple of schools. So specifically with Cam. Now they're up, they're big here. So assume they win this game. What do they have to do to go to the NCAA tournament? They're likely to draw USC in the first round, and they're likely to beat Arizona. So if they beat the they have to, I and they beat Arizona, yeah. are they in? Yeah, I do. They do I, not need to win the tournament. No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think if they get to 19 and they get those two wins, USC and Arizona, I, I think they would be in. Anthony Brown, the freshman. Now, remember, strength of schedule for, for California. I mean, you look, it's all about building a resume for the Bears. So, I mean, who have, who have they beaten? I mean, Temple turns out to be a, really a, a great win. They beat New Mexico, Iowa State. They did get UCLA. They beat USC, Washington State. Now, have they had some tough losses? Yes, they have. Uh, Stanford was playing well early in the year, and I thought Stanford would do a little bit better uh, than they have in, in the Pac-10. But you knew somebody had to lose some close games, and that was the Cardinal. So they lost to Kansas, Notre Dame, Boston College, uh, San Diego State. Uh, so, so they've lost, they've lost some, you know, Washington twice, which, which is tough. And, of course, they lost the UCLA. They split with the Bruins. So California really has played a terrific schedule. And you mentioned earlier that uh, Mike Montgomery has not had a, a season where he's not won 20 since 93-94. That's also the, the last time he did not go to the NCAA tournament. His final 10 years at Stanford, they made the tournament every single year. Went to a Final Four in 97-98, Elite Eight in 2000-2001. And he's made the tournament for two years here. And, and last year, wound up beating Louisville yeah. in the first round. That's right, Greg. And, you know, you talk about coaches. It's hard. Let's face it. It's hard to rate coaches. What, Mike is, is a Hall of Fame coach, in my opinion. He, he has done a fantastic job on Tana, Stanford, California. You know, we got back to Pete Newell. I always had a, you know, a soft spot in my heart. Everybody does. And, Everybody and does. not to mention a, a tremendous basketball coach. But, you know, there's been a lot of great coaches. You know, this, this, there's a ton of them. But Mike has certainly distinguished himself as one of the best. All right, they're coming over to look here. Anthony Brown shot there. And Gutierrez. Uh, what were they looking at on the replay there? There's someone who Gutierrez fouled, I think, is what they were looking at. Oh, pardon me, it was Gutierrez who was fouled on the, uh, the fouls on Stanford. You and I were talking about the tournament. We kind of lost the game there, so Jorge Gutierrez will be on the free throw line. Jorge has not scored a basket today. We opened the broadcast talking about last time. We're actually, it's going to be uh, Solomon who's on the line here, not Gutierrez. Did they see that correctly? In any event, Jorge's not scored after last time he was on the court. And went to 34 in the overtime win against UCLA. Well, even more impressive that California has been able to achieve here with this afternoon. You would not think the Bears would be up 18 and Gutierrez has not scored. So everybody else is really uh, 
answered the bell and done a nice job. And man, you know, no quit in the Cardinal. They're just hanging in there and they're fighting, they're scratching, they're pressing. You know, they're trying to steal the ball and trying to try to find a way to get back in the game. Brandon Smith, speaking of getting back in the game, is back in after going on the exercise bike. I think he had a five injuries playing a little bit of a wrap on his uh, lower leg. I'm not sure if that's it on the left side, but he's back in. And with him scoring, nice pass. Six. Some of them missed that dunk. Sanders flies it back in. The green is really scoring now. The starting five that Darren Harris, but can all score. Yes, so they can. The through the errors does not necessarily have to score, but this team no, is able to score. And Richard Solomon could score. See if he gets the call. Which way are you going to go? Calling it on Solomon, the block. Zimmerman dropped his shoulder and barely in, but they say Solomon was not set. He looks set to me. How is that? No, well, let's face, let's face it, Greg. That's a call that can go either way. I mean, you can, you can make that call. You know, if it happens ten times, it's going to be five going one way, five the other way. Well, Andrew Zimmerman, former Santa Clara Bronco, is on the line. Owens and Powell will come back in. Trotter's going to leave, and obviously Zimmerman after shoots the second free throw, he'll be leaving as well, and Powell will replace him. I think the mindset now for Stanford, if they, well, they couldn't score the ball. Had they scored, I think it's time to extend. Well, they're doing it a little bit right now. I, I think you got to take a few chances, maybe, maybe attack. Of course, that lead sometimes if the offensive team handles it, the first pressure doubles team, it's going to be an easy score. But uh, Stanford's got to have a choice. Alan Crabb, he got fouled by Green on the flyby. That's Green's second foul of the afternoon. Now Stanford, they're going to be forced to play in the play-in game on uh, Wednesday night. Kale, again, we're looking at probably a Thursday noon tip-off for the Bears. Don't quite know who Johnny Dawkins is going to draw on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, they're going to have to win. The only way they're going to make the NCAA tournament, four. obviously they went four in a row, which has not been done since Syracuse did it in the 2006 Big East tournament to win four in a row, the play-in game, and then three straight and three nights, which is they're actually two nights in a, in a day. I knew, I knew you'd come up with a Syracuse reference to this game. I knew that. But you're right. It took me nine minutes to go. <laughs> The second half. Can you imagine? Do I have one game for you? Yeah, can you imagine that though? Winning four in a row in your conference tournament to, to go to the tournament. Yeah, Syracuse did it. I know they did. I bet you know. Oh, Bayheim. <laughs> yeah, Bayheim knows what he's doing. Even, even they had a really poor, even had a really Sometimes. poor regular season, and they peaked at the right time of the year. Got a white man's defense. He will climb in your jersey. A very tough defender. He's forced to play point guard. Out of necessity, not a real pure point, but well, he can guard. And he fouled Brandon Smith. And he mentioned all the guys. Aaron Bright, freshman point over on the sideline. Obviously, he's not coming back in. Hopefully, he'll be able to play Wednesday at Staples in the play-in game. He can shoot. And look ahead to next year for Stanford. They're going to be. They lose nobody. Now, they don't lose anybody. Seniors at all. And this is a pretty good squad. Next year, you would have to think. There's Anthony Brown. There's their version of Alan Crabb. Powell had him ripped out of his hands by the little guy. Gutierrez How did he catch it? And how did he redirect it? Jorge with an amazing play. He's not scoring, but he's doing everything else. That was a Larry Bird to that, that was a magnificent pass in traffic. I didn't think he'd be able to catch it. Yeah, he just redirected yeah, it. Yeah, the redirection was the impressive thing. He got his hand on it and all in one motion, able to find the trailer coming down the middle. Brandon Smith just takes yeah. it away from the big guy. It's been the story of the game. Now look at that. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Well, these guys are enjoying our Curry Sanders Fison's last home game here. He's got a double double, a dozen, dozen, 12 points, 12 rebounds. Now, not all the precincts have reported in, Dan, <laughs> but we are going to declare the this NC uh, Pec 10 tourney this way. Cam will play SC. It'll be Thursday at noon, and it looked like Stanford is going to draw Arizona State. They beat the Sun Devils in Tempe on January the 6th, 55 41, and also beat them at Naples on February the 
fifth, 83-75. So they're 2-0 against the Sun Devils this year. They would draw them on Thursday night. Yeah, it's always tough to beat a team three times in one year, but uh, that will be the draw. And there you take a look at Jorge Gutierrez. He just ended up making one of the great passes that you'll ever see in the, in the open court. Jorge has not scored much but he's uh, in this game, but he certainly has defended, and uh, he's been a real asset to California. He could come back from a game like this and, and go into the Pac-10 tournament in that game at 25. Probably will. Well, this is the kind of game that Jorge had last year. We often said Jorge does not need to make a single basket to be the best player on the floor. Well, that's his first basket of the game. Right there. He's not been the best player on the floor today, but he helps you in so many ways. He does not need to score. But when he does, that is late. the dominance of California around the rim has been the story of this game. There's a shovel in by Stanford. Well, you're right, Mark Curry, Sanders, Friesen, and uh, Hartford Camp have owned the paint today. Well, certainly where it would appear is Alan Crabb. Oh, that's a nice floater, isn't it? He's not just a stage he's still shooter. He can no. score. Uh, he, he has super skill. It would appear that he can. You know what I like about Crabb, too? Great. Yeah. He makes it look so easy. You know, those, that was not an, an easy shot he just made, but you can run that motion for him, and if he doesn't have the three, he just put it on the floor. Again, a steal, the foul. Jorge got slapped to the face after he vice gripped that ball right out of the arms of Jeremy Green, and he got hit across the face. We got to go back and look at the, the redirection. I don't know how he even got to this ball. It was an overthrow, and then look at that. And with the left hand. And, and of course, he, he threw it to the right guy because Crab is running down the middle with the great hands and anticipated well and finished beautifully. But Gutierrez, and he took a little bit of a gamble because he threaded the needle on the pass, but that's what it's all about when, you, when you've got that kind of skill with it. He was talking to the officials. He got slapped in the face by Green after he stole the ball away. He got poked to the right eye, and he got slapped on the left side of the face just a moment ago. I think we all agree. That regardless, it looks like California's going to win this game when he's 65 42. The Bears are going to be a tough out from this point on. And USC, by the way, Brad, has been playing well, too. I mean, they're a team that's come on strong at the end of the year. And that should, that should be a really a terrific opening game in Pac 10 tournament. It's going to be a noon game, which is not the greatest time to play, but somebody has to play that noon game. And that's going to be a heck of a matchup between two teams that are playing well. Here's Gutierrez. Cal beat USC at the Galen Center early in the year. Uh, he is really going off. I'm he right. is sweet. I like Alan Crabb. I mean, is he unbelievable? I mean, he just, then all of a sudden he's got, he, he gets 20 before you know it. I know he's not at 20 yet, but he's approaching it. Houston knocks down the wing jumper to beat SC at the Galen Center. On January the 22nd, 68-66, they lost to him here. Alan Crabb did not play in the game. That was the game they lost 78-75 before they beat UCLA. And, and by the way, he does have 20. <laughs> Alan Crabb. And he had three and a half. He, had three, he just got his, it only happened so fast. I said, I don't think he's at 20 yet. Well, I'm wrong, he certainly is. Well, Smith grabbed him there. That could almost be, they're going to count that. I thought they might be thinking intentionally, but they felt that Brand Smith did play the ball. A little tough here. Jeremy Green's been physical with Ori Gutierrez. He spun on his own there. That's the difference between Jeremy Green as a scorer versus Alan Crabb. Alan Crabb could have made that move, but then laid it in. Green is, doesn't have quite the handle that Crabb has, but then he could stroke it. And remember, Crabb is 6'6". As, as you said, he, he's, got, he's got great ball skills for a big man. Harper Camp will come back in for Mike Montgomery and Jim Mann will come back in for Johnny Austin. And then we'll sit down for the Bears. I always thought that, especially this year, Stanford's a good bounce back team. They're, they're, they're a team that, you know, they're not obviously going to go into the tournament, the Pac 10 tournament, with, with a loss. But I think they're going to give Arizona State or whoever they play all they want. I think this is a team that will regroup. I think the coaching staff will probably, you know, make some, make some adjustments. And I, I really believe the Cardinal will be ready to play when that uh, when the tournament starts. Robbie Lemon's getting a little play time here. The Carmichael hardly plays all for Johnny Dawkins. Crab again. There is back the Cardinal. Gutierrez does not want to soar today. He wants assists. How about the touch pass? Wasn't that, wasn't that just sensational? 
Well, he leads the Bears not only in scoring, Jorge, but also in assists. He's second in the conference to Isaiah Thomas in assists. He did not need to score. Beautiful textbook breakout here. Yeah, and, and look at the touch pass. Here it comes right here. He's going to get it right back to him. And you're right. He wasn't thinking of the score at all. And you know, one thing about the Bears, when they get in the open court, you know, they have some players that can really finalize. And that's what Mike Montgomery will do. He'll say, okay, guys, you know, we're in the set. But if you've got the open court fast break and you can up-tempo someone else, go ahead and take it. And what a concept there on a two-on-one. They did not stop for a three-point shot. They actually went in. Well, you know what? Two Greg, on one. Greg, Greg is, you don't <laughs> like that. Greg no, doesn't like, well, I think it was like a five-on-one. Five-on-one. Oh, oh, yeah. But oh, I, I know you want to lay it, but when you're down and you've got a, a guy who's a great three-point shooter, I, I don't mind it. But All what right. you got to do is someone has to get right. back. And part of the reason also is Cal can't make a three today. They got three for 16. <laughs> Beyond the line, the three-point line is just overtaken all forms of basketball. It becomes so three-point so central. Pet, you mind. Let's move the line out. out. Move it further oh, out. Oh, yeah, move it out. It's too easy. Move the line out. I just want fewer long shots to try to get the ball inside more. Let's get a restraining circle. Right. Let's, let's eliminate the five-second call. Let's get eight seconds in the backcourt. And let's, five minutes to go in the right, game. And let's Very forget 35-second clock. Let's go to 30. We don't need 35. If you're going to knock the five-second count off, let's lower the clock. Why do we need 35? I want you to name the czar of all basketball. I mean, the women play 30. I mean, for, and, and they do a real good job. I, th I think the men could play 30 without a problem. Speaking I mean, of the women uh, got it right. We don't. How about Tara Vanderveer? We oh, also congratulations to Tara. The entire oh, she's schedule this year. She's a master coach, a Hall of Fame coach. She's on the ballot this year. Hopefully, she'll well, make this. Come on, she's, she's unbelievable. She will one day, if it's this year, not. She definitely will make it. As you said, I don't know if it's going to be this year, but she'll definitely be in. I'm surprised she wasn't already in when they had her as a finalist. There's a foul. Oh, yeah. oh traveling yeah. violation. Nice to done by Brandon Smith. The first day travel there on a frustrated Anthony Brown. So Stanford won the big game in football in a route. Obviously, Stanford won both of the uh, matchups, Tara Vanderveer against uh, Joanne Boyle and the, and the Bears. So Cal needed this win today to salvage something in the matchup between well, Cal and Stanford. I, going back to Tara, I mean, no, nobody beat them. <laughs> they were 18-0 in the league. Conference, but they lost a couple out of conference yeah. this year. Well, they're going to make a great run. I, I wish them well. I mean, they're seven and two they're, they're going to make a great run to, to win it all, and I hope they win it. Alan Craig! What a second half Alan Crabb has had. I know he's over 20. 22. <laughs> and he scored 19 to 22 in the second half. <laughs> 71 to 46. We thought we had a game about four minutes into the second we did. half. We did have a game. Bears, the Bears took a timeout, went right back inside, and uh, Alan Crack took over. And then all of a sudden, they put a lot of separation between themselves and the Cardinal. So I was asking you earlier, so are, are the Bears peaking at the right time? Right. It's, it's how you it's play in March. They played all year. You bet. It's how you play in March. I thought after the triple overtime loss to, to Arizona here, it's going to be hard for California to regroup. But I was wrong. They have regrouped. And it's a real testament to this California coaching staff and the team, what they've been able to achieve. Greg Papa, Dan Belwamini back inside Haas Pavilion. Yes, that score is correct. 71 to 46. The Golden Bears by 25. So they will go to 17 and 13 on the year. 8 and 10 in conference play. They'll wind up the year as they did last year, Dan, with a four-game winning streak you know, winning, inside the tournament. Winning 10 games in, in the Pac-10 conference is difficult. And for California to lose all the players they did last year and with the injuries this year, I mean, you really have to tip your cap to, to the Bears. They, they've had a terrific season. The finishing strong four-game win streak. They play USC in the first round of the Pac-10 tournament. So the Bears are flying high. And if you're a Cardinal fan, I really think they'll bounce back. They beat Arizona State twice this year. They'll probably play the Sun Devils in, in, a, uh, in, in the first night. So, you know, Stanford just has to regroup, come back, and, and, uh, and give it everything they have. But I think they will. I think they'll be tough. And I think they can go down there and, and take care of the Sun Devils. It'll be a tough game, but I think they can do it. They have a deal with Ty Abbott and Richards, Cook Six. Those guys have been there forever. As Mark Curry Sanders fries and playing his last game. They've been saluting him during the uh, timeouts here. The lone senior on either roster today playing his final game here in Berkeley and enjoying himself. He looks like a young girl dog, doesn't he? He really does, and he has played beautiful this afternoon. 
So you see all the signs for Mark Curry, only senior on either squad. And he's really come up big this afternoon. Big game, rebounding, scoring. He said a Baker's dozen dozen, 13 points and 12 rebounds. That's a lot of rebounds. Now two and a half to play. For those of you uh, watching up in the Sacramento area, we know the Kings are going to begin their game up at Energy Solutions Arena in Salt Lake City against the Jazz. That game will start on CSN Plus. And we'll uh, pick it up once this game is done here in Berkeley. By Brandon Smith. Brandon Smith has played exceedingly well. But Cal's passed the ball so well today. Cal has 16 assists today. Stanford only six. Well, here's Brandon Smith, and he's got the great vision. And of course, playing without the ball and moving and active is Gutierrez. And he is always ready for the pass. But Brandon Smith, who moved into that point guard position, and when he assumed it, Mike Montgomery could not get him off the floor. He's getting better and better with each game. Well, last time Cal played Stanford on January the 2nd, it was Gary Franklin. That's right. He started, and he was the point guard, and then they, he transferred. And then Brandon Smith took over. Zimmerman a three. Sanders fries in his 13th rebound of the day. He's not coming off the court. Well, that's going to keep the starters in there right to the end. 90 seconds to go, and they're all still out there. Anderson Murray has come in. Sanders fries in. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? He can make it three. He made a couple against USC. He can make the long run. Harris all the way into the Cardinal will answer back. So Stanford will wind up the regular season at 15 and 15. And this is now five straight conference losses to close the year, Dan. They're going to wind up 7 and 11 in conference play. And they've had three sub-500 conference years in a row. And that's not been done since before Mike Montgomery arrived there. Oh, and that's got to concern Johnny Dawkins and his coaching staff. I think Stanford will bounce back in the, in the Pac-10 tournament. But... It, it's difficult to lose conference game after conference game. And here goes uh, Mark Curry, Sanders, Bryson. Maybe, unless there's a, an NIT game here, the last time he comes off the floor for California, spectacular. He was simulating today. I mean, rebounding. He scored. He set the tone early by making an outside shot and really did a beautiful job on the glass. He was a glass eater this afternoon and propelled. He and Harper's camp in the first half propelled California to a big lead. 13 points, 13 rebounds for Sanders Friesen. Alan Crabb with 24 points of which he scored 21 in a magnificent second half. Harper Camp at 20 points himself. Solomon, that clock will sound. But they've got plenty. Can Stanford get to 50 here before the game is over? They got 48 points. They had a stretch of uh, seven straight games where they couldn't get to 60, and they may not get to 50 today. Brandon Smith will head off. He played uh, the danger in the second half. Trotter will get him 50 with 30 seconds to go in the half. But it was a struggle. Yeah, good pass by Houston that time. Get him the ball down low. Good hustle on the floor. Right? Good, good effort. Another 52. A so player, man. Yeah. Play like that when you're losing will get you more playing time. I'll guarantee you the next game. You, get, you hustle, you dive on the floor, you create an opportunity, and that will get you more time. Andrew Zimmerman has played with a lot of heart You here. bet he is. Playing with heart, he's playing with tenacity, and he's not looking at the scoreboard, giving everything he has. To Davey, brought him over from uh, Santa Clara. The final second series, these two schools will split. Stanford won at Naples in January, and Cal here on the first Saturday in March will win in a round. 74 to 55. And it was the front line. Crab got out in the second half, but it was Hufford King with 20. Sanders rising with 13 and 13 that set the tone today, Dan. Well, it was really impressive what California was able to do this afternoon. And Jorge Gutierrez did not score, but he did everything else. He did a nice job of leading this team. And I thought in that first half, Harper Kent was the guy that set the tone. He passed, he scored, he rebounded. He and Mark Curry, Sanders, Rice, and really did a great job to solidify this win. Allen Crabb, unbelievable in the second. Explosive in the second half. Allen was just unbelievable. 21 the second half, Greg. I was here. I, mean, I like saw it. it all. Did you see it? I I saw it. How did you like it? I saw it? most of it. I kind of zoned in and out there for a while. They win it by 19. Cal 
will more than likely play USC Thursday at noon. And it looks like Stanford will play Arizona State. That'll be Wednesday night in the play-in game. And if they win that, they get the UCLA Bruins. But you say if Cal beats USC, yes. then beats Arizona. Then I think they're in. the NCAA, not the NIT. That's me. That's Stan Milani. You bet. Mark it down. Mark it. I will make selections some days away from tomorrow. I'm coming over to your house if they don't make it. They're all coming over to salute to Ed Melvaney and the students behind us. All right, coming up next on Comcast Sportsnet California in Sacramento, you'll get the Kings at the Jazz in the Bay Area. You'll get the Dallas Stars against the Red Hot Sharks in the tank. 7 o'clock with Sharks pregame live. We'll drop the clock a little after that. For more info and further rest on the schedules and events, log on to our website, csmcalifornia.com. For David Feldman, our producer, our director, Mark Wolfson, the great Dan Belwamity. Nice year, Coach. Good to see you. I'm Greg Papa saying so long from Berkeley, Berkeley and so long to our curious.